Now the second case. So here is a 69 year old lady with HbA1c 7.6. She follows her doctor's advice. Uh, this is actually a real case. She follows her doctor's advice. She walks 30 minutes a, a day, every day, religiously. But one day what happened? She was in a lift and there was a sudden jerk. You know, sometimes the lift go up with a jerk. She lost balance, fell down. After that, she became so unnerved by this that she lost confidence and she stopped walking. And she told me, what's the use? You see, I walk every day, but still a sudden jerk, nobody fell down, I fell down. That she's disappointed in spite of following orders uh, by the doctor, she lost the balance at, and fell. What should we have been um, advising her? What have we not advised her? That's the question. So you see, balance training therefore carries importance. So here, if you see the dark uh, um, rectangles are the control and the gray color are the diabetes patients. So if you look at the left side, the risk score, the, the false risk score which is given here, uh, this is the risk score which is given here. So for diabetes patients, they have a, a higher risk score. But if you do balance training exercises, that risk score comes down remarkably well. And the hand reaction time, which is written here as H hand RT and the foot reaction time written as foot RT. So here for the diabetic patients, if you do balance exercises, their reaction time uh, uh, um, improves. So here it reaction time improves. So you're doing it quicker. So the lower it is, the better it is. That means you're reacting quicker. And that is what is needed if you have to prevent yourself from falling. You have to have a more improved reaction time. You have to have the muscles which are uh, involved in balancing you. You need to train up those muscles. That may not be always be trained just by walking. So you need to train up those muscles which help in balance. You need to improve your reaction time. And I've just shown you an example of how balance training helps these. So the question is, for balance training, I have shown you one, uh, one table wherein I have shown you the best one is yoga. So do we all have to do yoga? What if we don't know how to do yoga? We don't have time to do yoga. I'll just show you a few simple things from NHS um, United Kingdom. They have got very, very simple exercises that you, me and all our patients can do at home, in office, wherever they want. So balance exercises, which I'll show you now, it reduces the risk of fall by improving balance and gait, even in adults with peripheral neuropathy. So I will show you this now. So this I have told you already this graph that yoga has the best balance and the flexibility, while many of them just have got one plus as regarding balance. But yoga has got three pluses. So how can you improve? So this is one example. So look at this um, uh, gentleman. He is uh, standing cross-legged. So you stand straight and you then stand cross-legged. Simple. You walk tiptoe. Look at the pictures on your right here. You walk tiptoe. One step in one front of the other. Just walk tiptoe. That will We do it to check cerebellar function. That will improve your balance. Then you, you hold the, 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 the wall with your, just with your tip of the finger just to support you. And you lift your leg. You stand, basically you are standing on one leg and you are holding the wall so that you don't fall down. If you keep doing it, in, increase the num amount of time that you are doing it, you will find that your balance improves because the muscles which are involved in balance is strengthened. So another one from Mayo Clinic in United States. So stand on one leg and move the leg out. You can uh, swing the legs which is out to the left, to the fro to front, towards the front towards the back, then you can go one step further. You can see this gentleman has got a weight, so you can do that here. Then you lift the leg which is opposite to that the weight, then you lift the leg which is on the side of your the weight that is there. So you can stand on a pillow, on a soft pillow, because you remember the pillow, soft pillow uh, causes a bit of disbalance. But if you stand there, practice yourself, your muscles get strengthened. Other advice, you just stand on your one feet. Whenever you're standing up at home, at work, I told you when you are sitting in the computer for a long time, after 30 minutes to one minute walk you do, of that you 10 seconds, you just stand on one feet. 
you stand up from your seated position without using your hands. Normally, we use both our hands to stand up. Don't use your hands. Just stand up without using your hands. That helps your balance.